I'm Sean Jacobs, incident meteorologist with the National Weather Service, and I'm out here on the Millie Fire going to tell you about the weather for the next five days. So we had a ridge of high pressure that built across the region yesterday and today, and it brought the warm and dry conditions to the fire. In fact, in some cases, temperatures were some 10 degrees above average across the fire uh, today. That ridge of high pressure will build east as a trough of low pressure builds across the Pacific, uh, off the Pacific coast. Um, as that trough starts to move inland, we'll start to see a greater southwest flow aloft. We're talking in the upper levels of the atmosphere. That southwest flow was responsible today for bringing that smoke from southwest Oregon and northern California across the fire today and causing those smoky conditions. So for tomorrow, we anticipate continued smoky skies with uh, that smoke from California, that smoke from southwestern Oregon, and of course the smoke from Millie, the Millie fire impacting this area. Temperatures tomorrow are going to be moderated because of that smoke with highs generally running about 10 degrees cooler than what we saw today. That's going to allow relative humidity to increase uh, significantly, in, case, in some cases as much as 10% higher. We saw relative humidity values bottoming out in the mid to upper teens over the lower elevations of the fire, which is unusually low for this area. Tomorrow, I'm anticipating relative humidity around 29-30%, which is a good thing. Um, in terms of uh, winds tomorrow, we're still anticipating those westerly winds. Now the smoke strengthened the inversion today. An inversion is an inverted temperature profile. In a standard atmosphere, you would expect the temperature to cool as you go aloft. However, in an inverted profile, temperatures warm. So with that warming temperatures, it acts like a cap or a lid and helps trap the smoke. So for tomorrow, with that cap in place or that inversion in place, it will help trap those pollutants, but also limit the winds until the warming of the Earth's surface is able to overcome that inversion. Once that happens, we will see those gusty westerly winds. Because of the topography out west, those winds have been increased by those peaks and the uh, terrain. If you think about wind as a fluid running down a river, if it encounters a obstacle, it'll either go around or go over, or sometimes eddy around that obstacle. That's exactly what the wind is doing. In fact, it's been channeled from some of those uh, higher peaks to our west and really increased. So we can see gusts tomorrow from the west, generally from the west, 20 miles per hour in the afternoon. Uh, looking ahead to later this week, we do have that trough that swings through. Now, with the southwest flow aloft, we've seen some moisture being pulled up with the smoke. So storms and showers are a possibility tomorrow. They will be isolated to scattered in nature, and I do believe most of those storms will be to the east over eastern Oregon or at least east central Oregon. However, I cannot rule out an isolated storm impacting the fire. If it does, only right, light rainfall would be expected, unfortunately. For Friday and the weekend, that trough starts to be replaced by a building ridge of high pressure. With high pressure, we anticipate or we see sinking air, so we would expect warming temperatures, and that will happen this weekend. In fact, by early next week, temperatures will return back into the 90s for the lower elevations of the fire. And unfortunately, there is a front that comes through on Thursday, and behind the front, there is a lot of dry air. So relative humidity values this weekend, and especially early next week, are going to be low. This is Sean Jacobs from the Millie Fire. Y'all stay safe.